Good morning guys, welcome back. As it's very rainy weather today, I decided to take you along on a second short and very quick MYOG project. And today I am going to make some gift for Ravi. I'm going to make a collapsible water bowl for him and I'm going to do that out of cotton. And then of course you're going to say, how on earth are you going to make a water bowl out of cotton? Because cotton is everything but waterproof. But there's a solution for that and I'm going to show you today how to make cotton waterproof and then make a collapsible water bowl out of it. So stay tuned. So for this project you obviously need some materials as well. And for this you will need cotton and make sure that you've got 100% cotton. This size is 12.5 by 12.5 inch, so around 32 centimeters. Two pieces of parchment paper, which are each bigger than your sheet of cotton is. Bias tape in the color of your choice. Make sure that it is wide enough to fold over the edges of your water bowl. Beeswax, and make sure that you've got a decent quality of beeswax because that will show in the end product. Plus you need an iron and an ironing board. And this is how you make your cotton waterproof. Lay your first sheet of parchment paper on the ironing board. Then put your cotton on top. It doesn't matter if you take it right side up or right side down. I like to put the right side down because that makes it easier to see at the end if the wax has divided pretty well. After that you can start dividing the wax over your cotton. You can start in the middle and easily work your way around. You do not have to put a lot of wax on it because the heat of the iron will spread it out evenly and make sure it gets disturbed all around your cotton. And don't worry, you can always add some more wax afterwards when you're seeing that there are some places missing. After you have divided all the wax onto your cotton, you're going to add the second piece of parchment paper on top of it. Make sure that every piece of corner of the cotton has been covered. Take your iron and put it on the highest setting. That's usually the setting for cotton. Start by pressing down easily so the wax is starting to melt. Don't move your iron around too quickly because then the parchment paper will slide and the wax will come underneath from it. So easily press on it and then you can start sliding around with your iron. Every now and then you can check if the wax is evenly divided. If not so, you can just lift it up and check if you see any spots that are lighter than the other ones because that shows that there is no wax. You can easily put in some more and redo your process of ironing. Let your cotton cool down completely and then remove the parchment paper. You can easily take it off and it shouldn't be a problem at all to take your cotton off the bottom sheet as well. And here you have your waxed cotton, ready to start working with it. Well that was easy wasn't it? And as you can see now the cotton has become way stiffer. You don't need an awful lot of wax but if you want it to be more stiffer of course you can use more. Um, it does smell, so maybe before you start using these products, you want to let it air out in the, in the outside air. Um, because, yeah, it, it obviously has a smell because it is uh, a product. I use beeswax, so it is an animal product. Um, so now you have this stiff, waterproof cotton. And what you can do, I'm going to make a water bowl out of it, but it has a lot of uses. For example, you can make a food wrap if you would like to take a sandwich or something. And you make a food wrap for around your food. You can make snack bags out of it because it's very easy to clean. You just take a damp cloth and you wipe it off and then it's clean. So it's very well reusable. So yeah, now we are going off to the next step for making it a water bowl because Ravi will not be able to drink out of this yet. So what I will be doing is I will put the fabric with the right side down, so the um, bad side, so to say, is up. Then I'm going to take the corners and I will make sure that they are straight against each other and I will clip it. And I will do that with each of the four corners. It doesn't matter how far you clip it because you're going to measure the right size in a few seconds. It's just that these edges are folded. And then the last one. So 
So as you can see now it already has a little bit of the uh, shape of a ball. And what we are going to do next is we are going to measure out on these corners a distance of um, 3 inches. Usually here in Europe of course we work with centimeters but the pattern I have for it was in inches and if you're going to put 3 inches into centimeters you're getting a little bit of a weird number. So I will stick to the 3 inches. I will measure that to each of the corners, make a mark down so I know that where I have to close it up. So luckily I also have a ruler that tells me not only centimeters but only inches, makes it a little bit more easier in this case. So then I am going from the edge, so here is the 3 inches and I am going to mark 3 inches so then we are right here. And I'm going to draw that line using the lines of my cutting mat so I know that I am going straight. Then I will go 3 centimeters down. So then I here I can see my line so I know where to close the ball up. So that's the next step for all four corners. So I've now done that for all four corners and now I'm going to stitch over these lines. If you would like to keep water in this bowl for several hours or maybe a whole day, I would like to advise you to skip this part because obviously now you are making some holes in it. It isn't a problem because you're going to fold it over afterwards. So it's not a prob problem when you're just using it when you're taking a break. But if you would like to use this for a whole day, for example at camp, then skip this step and just go to the next one. Don't always forget the backstitch, also on projects like this. Be sure to slowly guide your material through your machine and also at the end make about three or four backstitches. So that's up for the next three corners as well. So after you're done with that, you're having something like this and then you're going to clip them together. So it will end up like this. And then the next step is to sew here on top along the edge to make sure that these corners stay where they need to be. So basically your bowl is ready now. I want to apologize for the bad lighting, but it's getting darker and darker outside because the weather is so horrible today that I'm a bit struggling with the light, but I hope that everything shows up clearly. So in general, oh, I see I have a thread here that I have to cut. In general, it is ready now. You can leave it like that if you want to, but of course, then you see all the stitches over here. So what I am going to do, I'm going to add some bias tape to it and stitch that around the top. So it has a nicely edge. And I know that this is not the original way to add a bias tape because you have to first sew it on one side and then on the other. But because this material is so stiff, it's very easy to fold around it. You have the natural fold in your bias tape, so you can easily align that with the top of the water bowl. So therefore, this is an easier way, which you can perfectly find use for this project because it's not a heavily used project. So yeah, you will be fine on that. So I'm going to cover that all around it, sew it, and then I get back to you. So this is it, the bowl already. Have the bias tape around it, did a little extra stitching on where the bias tape meets. And then this is your water bowl. And like I mentioned in the beginning, it is collapsible. You can easily fold it down like this, fold the edges inside like this. And you can put it in your backpack, fold it double again if you want to. And you have a nice small little package which takes up absolutely no space in the water bottle pocket of your backpack. And when your dog's in need of water, you easily have it on hand. What you can do if you'd like to hang it to your backpack is see where it folds. And then for example here put a little hole in it. Um, and you can clip a carabiner on it or something. But this was a quick little project for a nice and rainy, cold, dark day like this. I hope that your dog likes it. Now let's test, test this of course. Put in some water. 
yeah, stays in it. If I remove the bowl, dry, nothing's leaking out of it. So yes, it is waterproof. So this was a really nice project to do. I found it on the internet. So yeah, I made my own variation on it. And uh, I think the dogs will absolutely love it. Um, we'll have to learn to get to you know wax a little bit more. Um, but I think, yeah, this is going in our day pack and I think the dogs will love it. I hope you like this video as well, that I could give you an idea to do as well, when maybe the weather is just as drooling and sad as it is here today. And of course, you can also do it on a nice summer day, wherever you are in the world, when it's just a good day, but you're not doing into something, your dog having a day of rest or something, then it's easy for you to make this little project. So this was the second video in my make your own gear video. I'd like to say thank you for watching it and I will see you on the next project. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye.